Hey there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. The last lesson got over 10,000 views, so here we are again with a brand new lesson. I hope you're enjoying these. As uh, the thing that I always say at the beginning of these lessons, if you are new to this channel, I highly recommend you go back and watch some of the previous videos that we have. That way you can get used to the sound of my voice because I will be speaking more quickly in this series and in these videos. Uh, the other announcement is that uh, it's a very cold day, one of the coldest in recent history in Japan. There's a lot of snow outside as well. So actually a lot of cars and things can't go by. So a lot of people aren't traveling today. So it should be a little bit more quiet. But I've got my daughter in the next room and she's not in the greatest mood so if you hear any like screaming coming from the next room it sounds like a cat then that's probably just my daughter at least i hope it is if it's somebody else not that I'm, i might be a little bit worried about that too anyway after we've got those two uh, or since we've got those two announcements out of the way to get something out of the way to get something out of the way this just means to finish it so you can move on to something else so we've got the announcements out of the way and we can progress forward because those are not in our way anymore we've gotten that out of the way anyway let's get into the video so this is something uh, because it has been cold and I've been you know kind of reading a few extra books with my daughter we reread something every day and often the same book many many times we just like to review things uh, but since we've got books in English and Japanese that we read to my daughter and I kind of read some Japanese books but mostly I do the English and my, my wife will do a lot of the reading of Japanese books but we do tend to speak in both languages in front of her uh, and she'll notice that sometimes. So I'll say something like, you know, I'll say it in Japanese and she'll kind of look at me like, what are you speaking that language for? But anyway, uh, so one thing that's interesting is because we've been reading all these books and my wife, you know, and even like her mother tries to, you know, read some of these books too. Uh, I've just got a few samples of things. These are some classic uh, or very... <clears throat> Uh, very common books that most native English speakers get so if you're looking for maybe some popular books or something that you want to read to your kids uh, these are a couple of them so we got good night moon a very popular book this is like over 60 years old and it's got uh, some very simple pictures in here but very classic pictures and one of the things about children's books is that we get um, you know you you start reading it as a child and then you read it to your kids and you know so the cycle continues and continues and we've also got two chameleon books i really like this one here this is uh the mixed up chameleon so hopefully i don't get uh this is an eric carl book so maybe you've heard of the very uh, hungry caterpillar so that's a caterpillar book and then i'll look at this one as well uh, and then we've got a color of his own this is another um, there's another book about a chameleon, but since my daughter enjoyed this one a lot, uh, I figured why not get another chameleon book. So this is one uh, I enjoyed a lot when I was a kid, and so now I'm reading it to her. And we're working through the book, and the interesting thing is that as my wife is trying to read this as well, and also read it in English, um, one of the things we do do is, like, I'll take a Japanese book and give it an English story. I just use the pictures and tell whatever I like, because my daughter can't read yet. Uh, but my wife will actually try to read some of the English, and her pronunciation is pretty good. But we use... The books as not only a tool for my daughter but also for my wife to improve her pronunciation because these are very simple sentences that she can focus on and uh, reading books for little kids and hearing them pronounced is one of the best things you can do to improve your pronunciation so before you try to have a like really advanced pronunciation where you're speaking really quickly using advanced language try to get a really good pronunciation with really simple things so that's what I thought I would do in this video so we're going to actually use uh, a couple of these just example sentences and lines from different books and we'll go over the pronunciation of them <clears throat> so <clears throat> as we're beginning here so uh, the first one here is called a color of his own now if I'm going to pronounce this in a very clear way a color of his own now it just means like as kind of the backstory for the book uh, a chameleon can change its colors and so a color of his own means that it's a chameleon color that's only for the chameleon or something that like the chameleon always has so as an example uh we've got like you know parrots are green even though there are many different color parrots and you know goldfish are gold or red or whatever they are you know individual animals have different colors like pigs are pink and elephants are gray those are some examples from the book uh, but the chameleon is sad because he doesn't have a color of his own so that means his own individual color there goes the baby sound now. Anyway, so the uh, even the title of the book, we can just start with this one. 
Now, my wife would read this and she would say, a color of his own. And really trying to pronounce it uh, uh, very clearly and carefully. But when we're pronouncing it as a native speaker, would we blend the sounds of our words together? So here we go. Listen carefully. I'm going to read it at a native speed. Just listen to it a couple of times. I'll just say the title. A color of his own. A color of his own. I hope that was my daughter and I hope everything's okay in the next room. If you heard that, it's like, Ram. anyway, a color of his own, a color of his own. Now, even if I say it slowly, I'm going to say the same thing with the same blending again, a color of his own, a color of his own, a color of his own. So if you take a look at the sentence here, what we're actually blending, so a color but we take the er sound from color and move it over to of. So a color of. <laughs> well, I hope that's entertaining, you know, even if you can, it kind of like livens up the video, have like the kind of cat noises and baby noises coming from the other room. But a color of his zone. So a color of the zone. We blend the sounds of the words together, especially when we have a consonant. So we have like of his, the S from his, and then the O from own. So we don't say his own. We say like his own, his own, his own, his own, a color of his own, a color of his own. So I'm going to just read, uh, read a few pages of this just so you can see what it sounds like. And then we'll take a look at some of the other books as well. <laughs> Now listen, like try to imagine first what the pronunciation would be. We got this first one here. Parrots are green. Parrots are green. So I don't say parrots are green. I'm saying parrots are green. Parrots are green. So it'd be tsar, tsar, tsar. Parrots are green. Parrots are green. So this is a perfect example of a sentence where we've got the uh, S from parrots combining with the R or the A sound from R. So parrots are green. Goldfish are red. Goldfish are red. So this is another example here. Goldfish. If you can see that. Whoop. There we go. Goldfish are red. But it becomes goldfish are red. 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 Again, we're taking the sounds of our words and blending them together. And you should get a good idea of how this sounds because it becomes easier to say if you blend it together and more difficult to say if you're trying to sound out each sound individually. All right, here's a longer one. So we've got a pink pig here and it says, all animals have a color of their own. All animals have a color of their own. Now I'm going to pronounce it like a native speaker. All animals have a color of their own. All animals have a color of their own. A color of their own. A color of their own. All animals have a color of their own. So that's enough for this one. Uh, we can also take a look at uh, Good Night Moon. This is another uh, classic, another favorite book here uh, for many kids. And when you're thinking about, you know, practicing reading with your kids or trying to trying to, you know, teach them English, you start with something really simple like this because it takes one idea like Good Night and it just repeats over and over again with lots of different things. So you want to take something simple and change it, you know, one way like Good Night Red Balloon. Good night window, good night picture, good night house, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. But listen to how I say good night. That's the important thing here. So I don't say good night. It's like good night, good night. So I've got a space there where the D sound would be good night, good night. But I don't say good night. And the reason I don't say that is because it's more difficult to say it gives me, you know, it kind of makes me use my effort and my, my mouth more. Good night. And it takes longer to say. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So we say good night. So it's like the letter is there, but we remove the actual sound of it. So the sound kind of spacing is there. So we take a little time. Good night. Good night. Good night. But I don't say good night good night good night moon good night air good night noises everywhere 
Another great book I highly recommend uh, checking out. So we'll look at the Chameleon book, and this one is just an entertaining book that uh, I like reading to my daughter because it's such a, it's really such a silly book. So it's kind of a similar idea to the um, uh, the other Chameleon book about the Chameleon not being able to find, uh, you know, a color of his own. But when the Chameleon, who has a kind of everyday, you know, ordinary life, he's going through his life and he's got uh, like different, kind of like sneaking under here. So he's got, you know, regular colors and he can change colors depending on where he is. And when he goes to a zoo, though, he sees all these different animals that he can sound like and look like and try to be like. And so he, he thinks like, oh, I want to be big and strong like an elephant and have a long neck like a giraffe. And, and in the book, so he decides to change his color. So he's going to start being white like a chameleon, uh, white like a white polar bear and then pink. Look at that, and like by the end of the book, I mean, he's getting, you know, pre pretty crazy looking. So this is the uh, mixed up chameleon. And we have a, a very good phrasal verb right in the title here. To be mixed up is just to be confused. Or you have, uh, you know, different things happening in your, you know, basically just confusion in general. But the mixed up chameleon, the mixed up chameleon. Listen carefully to how I blend this title. The mixed up chameleon, the mix... <laughs> Oh no, we got the baby noises. The mixed up, mixed up, mixed up, mixed up. So we don't say mixed up chameleon. We say the mixed up chameleon, mixed up chameleon, mixed up, mixed up, mixed up, the mixed up chameleon, the mixed up chameleon. Well, I hope this has been an entertaining video for you. Uh, I hope, you know, as you're trying to improve your pronunciation, that you're looking for small things, short things like this, especially, you know, very simple examples like we produce in the videos that we have here on YouTube for you. And then also looking at things like children's books. This is the same thing I do when I'm improving my Japanese. And I'm just looking for very simple things that I can use to master the sounds of things. And I repeat them over and over again. The mixed up chameleon, the mixed up chameleon, mixed up, mixed up, mixed up. So that way, when I take something like the mixed up chameleon from a children's book like this, I can say the mixed up situation. It was a mixed up day. It was a mixed up situation, a mixed up event. I got mixed up. So I can take all of these situations and because I practice them, when I use them in a conversation, I'm much more using them. The mixed up chameleon. Hopefully you didn't get too mixed up about looking out uh, some of these books and this has been entertaining for you. And I really look forward to releasing our ultimate guide to pronunciation, especially American pronunciation that we'll be releasing later this year. This is going to be up like amazing. I'm really excited about this. It's a really great tool that we're creating for learners, our ultimate guide to pronunciation. And that way it will take you uh, through simple things like this as well. So you can practice on individual letters, individual sounds, whole words, sentences, and really get to, you know, sound things together and see how things blend so you can start sounding much more like a native English speaker. Well, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, do share it, share it with five people. You know, I'm just going to say, go ahead, share this video with five people. Aria agrees. She's like, ah, like share the video, you know, share the video with five people, like it and do uh, put a comment down below. You can put your own sentence, maybe like I was mixed up about something or, you know, take another thing like even parrots are green, but you know, just take your time to comment and actually try to use what you're learning in your conversations. Find something simple, repeat it often, and that's how you're going to get more, uh, much more confident when you're speaking. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you after this video gets 10,000 video views or more in the next one. <laughs> bye bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native, and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.